Hello, this is Danpro. Welcome to my rigging channel. We're in part 5 of my advanced deformation tutorial series. Now in the first four tutorials, I introduce what I think are the first four elements that are necessary for creating a good deforming rig. So it's the socket rig, the two bone deformation system, the squash and stretch, and also the anti-scissoring uh, setup. So now it's time to complete this rig and get it ready for weight paint. Now there's going to be a fifth element, but before we get to that, I want to have these, this base set of deformation bones um, working properly and I want the meshes properly weight painted to those base set of deformation bones. Now as I mentioned the fifth element is going to add additional deformation bones on top of that but first we need this base set um, deforming our mesh and then we can design those systems to wherever we have problems deforming or need extra control we can add those uh, final systems later and then that should bring it to another level. So there's two main goals for this tutorial. One is just to complete the rig and the other one is just to show you a bunch of tips and tricks on how to rig efficiently because we're already at 86 bones in this rig. We're going to double that in the next 10 minutes and it's very important to do things in the proper order to save yourself time and I just want to show you those tips and tricks, things that I've learned over the years uh, to help that process. So let's start with the spine since we have not done any rigging on that spine. So I need three bones for the main torso and then I've added one for the neck and one for the head and again I have simply named these def spine.001 and then copy and pasted that to the others so it will sequentially number those up that chain. Naming takes time and whenever you can cheat a little bit like this I say cheat because uh, time is valuable. So with those deformation bones named and properly placed. I've included the deaf shoulder bone in this. I've duplicated them and then moved that set of duplicates out to the side and this is going to be the control chain. Now the only odd uh, ball here here is the root or the hip bone which I've renamed to hip and I've just simply taken this bone and flipped it using Alt F and the reason for that is is the hip does not rotate naturally from the base of the crotch it rotates more naturally from about the navel position so the next step is to make sure that each deformation bone is parented to each one of these control bones but the control bones basically are uh, a very easy setup it's just a parent-child relationship where the head is parented to the neck neck and the shoulder parented to the chest chest parented to the spine and finally the spine and the uh, hip bone are not parented to each other, they're parented to the root bone. And that allows me to set up a very simple uh, FK style rig. I want the hip control though to, uh, I want the rest of the spine to follow that hip. So I'm going to copy the location, add a copy location to the spine following that hip so it stays connected. And now I'm not going to introduce any scale up that chain or any rotation up that chain from the hip bone. So that's a very, very simple setup. If I go to my display options and turn on shapes, you can see that I've added custom shapes to each one of those control bones. And I have just used the shapes generated from a Rigify rig and added those to it. Again, this is just to save time. Now with all the parenting and constraints set up, I can just simply take all of these bones and replace them back in position, GX, and holding control to enable snapping, inter increment snapping, replace them. Now back in pose mode everything should be set. Now also with these bones still selected I'm going to start moving them to bone layers to start organizing that. I want them all on bone layer 1 so all my controls are on layer 1. I'm going to enable that layer here so we can see them again and I just want to quickly double check to make sure that when I rotate the control bone the deformation bone is going with and that seems to be the case and I also like to check the root bone make sure nothing's being left behind I'll grab it I'll rotate it everything looks relative and scale it everything seems to inherit that scale so we're good to go now there are a couple of areas where I've neglected to add deformation bones in the earlier tutorials one is a deformation bone for the toe the foot and also for the hand now this is a simple remedy all we need to do is select the intermediate toe foot and hand bones, duplicate them, and then uh, rename them to deformation bones. I've already gone ahead and done this. Then the deformation bone just needs to be parented to its corresponding intermediate bone. And we're set there. And one final thing, something I have 
um, been avoiding is the rigging of the hands or the finger wounds. Again, I've used the simple, simple naming convention so I can copy and paste for each one of these bones, just changing the, from index, middle, ring, pinky, and thumb. I have added four bones for the palm, same naming convention. Once the deformation bones have been created, I've duplicated them, brought them out to the side to create my control bones. Each one of the deformation bones simply needs to be parented to the, its corresponding control bone. I've added custom shapes here, again, and I've used a single custom shape for most of the finger bones, and that is the thumb widget. And just by copying this name, I can quickly paste to the other uh, finger bones. I've also used a separate set or a separate one for the it is the shoulder widget for the palm bones. Now again, this is just simple um, FK style chains where this is a child of that with keep offset. Each finger needs to be parented to its corresponding palm bone, and then finally the first bone in the thumb and then all four palm bones just need to be parented to the deformation bone for the hand and you can see the parenting right here and once that is complete we are ready to reposition everything so I will make sure that nothing is selected then I will box select my control bones GX and holding control I will move them back into position and they are still selected I'm going to move them all to layer one so I have all my controls on layer one I will select the rest of the deformation bones, move them to layer 2, and now we have a very simple setup where all of the control bones are on layer 1, all the deformation bones on layer 2, and finally all the mechanism bones on this layer directly underneath layer 1. One other operation that I want to do is to um, turn on the deformation toggles. Now I haven't spent any time going through this list and turning this on and off as I've been rigging and that is because I can do this very simply by selecting everything at once and turn it on or off uh, for any bones that I wish. Now I do not want any bones that are not specifically named DEF to deform my mesh so I'm going to select uh, both of the MCH and the control bone layers, select every bone in that uh, group, shift W, toggle bone options, deform and I don't want to just toggle them, I want to make sure that they are disabled for every one of those bones. And just to be safe, I will select all the deformation bones on this layer, do the same process, deform, and make sure that it is enabled for every one of those deformation bones. One other process I'd like to take care of is I do not want the animator to have any control over the mechanism bones or the deformation bones. Now if you were to scale, translate, or rotate some of these mechanism bones, it's possible, quite possible, that you're going to break the rig. And because the deformation bones are often serving dual duty and also acting as mechanism bones, I want to lock all the transforms for them as well. So I'm just going to select one of these deformation bones and lock the transforms. So no location, rotation, or scale for any of them. Then I'll select all of the bones, reselect that one that I locked to make it the active bone. And with the copy attributes add-on, I can do control C and find copy protected transforms. And now all of those bones, and there was 44 of them, are now completely locked. And you cannot rotate them, translate them, or scale them. And there's no, um, no longer any issues with breaking the rig. Something else that's going to uh, very speed up the process here, you probably noticed that I have not named anything .l or .r, and that is actually pretty important for copy and pasting, but um, Blender has a tool that will automatically update those bones for me and name those bones and append that. So I'm going to go to edit mode, that is where this operation is done, make sure that all my bone layers are on. I want to make sure nothing is selected. I want to, I'm just going to use B to box select all of the left side bones here. This needs to be done on all the controls and all the mechanism bones and all the um, deformation bones. I can go over to the armature tab here and find auto name left and right and this will append .l to all of these bones since this is the left side of the character. And you can, if 
I quickly go through there, you can see everything has been renamed properly to .l. If I go back to um, Edit Mode, reselect all those bones, I can use yet another tool. I want to make sure that I don't get that hip in uh, any of those central bones in that process. So now with them reselected, I can go back to that under Auto Name left and right. I can now click Symmetrize and that will give me the whole right side of my character um, basically for free. So if I tab back into pose mode, just check everything out, make sure that everything's rotating right. There we go, we are set, we have a full working um, character and we are ready for weight paint. Now one final thing that I want to mention before I end this tutorial is my naming for MCH and DEF. Now it's good for organization but it also has a secondary purpose and this isn't very well documented anywhere that I can uh, find. If I select all of the bones in my rig in pose mode and type I to insert keyframes and use the whole character key set, what I want you to notice in the dope sheet and the action editor is none of the bones that have been named MCH or DEF have shown up in this list and that's actually a good thing and that's why I use that naming convention because I do not want um, the animator to have any excess keyframes for any channels or any bones that are not needed for animation and that's what um, that simple naming adding DEF and MCH will do for us so there are three prefixes that I know that the whole character key set will ignore it is DEF, MCH and then there's ORG and that stands for original that is used by the Rigify add-on so if you are modifying a Rigify uh, rig, which I do quite often, just be aware that um, your ORG bones, you don't want to make them control bones because they will not um, keyframe when you're using the whole character key set. Now another reason that is important is when you're setting poses in the pose library, if I just go to my demo poses here, if you have any bones with those three prefixes, ORG, DEF, or MCH, they will not record in the pose library because the pose library uses the whole character key set for um, recording the poses. So be aware of that, and that is why I have not used MCH on any of my intermediate bones. Eventually I will change that name once I have my IK and FK setups, but I would not be able to keyframe these demo poses if I used MCH for a prefix. So be aware of that. Now we're ready for weight painting. I hope these tips help. Until next time, good luck.